So I don't know about you, but things just feel a little bit crazy right now. So I wanted to show you a very, very simple, very versatile bread dough that you can turn into sandwich bread, pizza crust, cinnamon rolls, dinner rolls, French bread, pretty much you name it, this dough can do it. And yes, in case you were wondering, that is not leprosy on my neck, I burned myself with a curling iron. Thankfully, I'm much better at making bread than I am trying to do my own hair. So here's the quick ingredient list. Okay, so as written, this recipe will make one loaf of bread or one 12 inch pizza or one pan of dinner rolls, um, but you can easily double it. First thing we're gonna do is add two teaspoons of dry yeast into our mixing bowl. Okay, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of sugar. I'm just using a brown sugar here. So you can also use two teaspoons of honey. Next up, you're going to add one and one third cup of warm water. Now when I say warm, I'm, I'm talking like body temperature. And yes, I always stick my finger in the water. Um, warm water is gonna activate the yeast, but if it's too hot, it will kill the yeast. So if you can put your finger in the water and you know it wouldn't burn your baby, then you're good to go. And go ahead and stir that until it's dissolved. Now, there are recipes that want you to proof this and make sure it bubbles and stuff first. As long as your yeast is pretty recent and you didn't buy it 10 years ago, I usually skip that step and just keep on trucking. All right, into this, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of fine sea salt. I keep mine in a bowl because that's what all the fancy chefs do. And then crack your egg right into there and mix it in with your warm water. Once you have this kind of the slurry going on down here, it's time to add the flour. I'm gonna be using unbleached, ooh, all the way over here. <sighs> Unbleached all-purpose flour. You could even use whole wheat flour here or a mixture of all-purpose and whole wheat. This is pantry cooking, so we're just gonna use what we have. But I always start with a lesser amount. Let me grab my measuring cup. I always start with a lesser amount, which would be three cups, and then kind of go by feel after that. And I'm gonna explain to you in a minute what that looks like. Okay, so I have my three cups of flour, and I'm just gonna start mixing it together. So this is where we gotta get our hands dirty. Um, I have stirred all the flour in I can with my fork, but you can see this dough, it's what we call shaggy dough. It's very sticky, it's rough looking, it's making my fingers look like a mess, so it needs more flour. Gonna go ahead and put a little flour on my counter and dump it out. And this is the beginning of the kneading process. I'm just gonna start working that flour. This might be a little too much flour, so I'm gonna set it aside. I'm just gonna start working it on my counter and getting that super shaggy stickiness to go away. And you're gonna be surprised at how quickly it comes together. It's gonna grab a little of that loose flour as it still continues to stick to my hands. And here's the deal, guys. People get really nervous about kneading, but it doesn't have to be complicated. It's literally just working the dough. And I kind of have a rhythm, I just turn it a quarter turn, press it with my palm, turn it a quarter turn again, flip it over, press it with my palm. But really, it's kind of just as long as you're working it, you're probably gonna be just fine. I'm gonna do this for, I don't know, three or four minutes. It's going to get smoother, and you'll see the dough change from shaggy to smooth. It's kind of halfway there at this point. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of my flour off the side if I need it. I actually really enjoy kneading. I have a mixer with a dough hook and I don't use it at all. I like feeling the dough. It grounds me here in what I'm doing. It just feels really good. Bonus, if you're mad at somebody, you'll knead even better. And the more you do this, you're gonna be able to start listening to the dough. The dough will talk to you. So what kneading does, in addition to just bringing everything together, is it develops the gluten in the bread. And gluten's not a bad thing, uh, not unless you have celiac disease, but gluten is what makes our breads have the bread texture. And we have to kind of develop it in order to get the loaf to rise and, well, behave like bread. I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna get it as close to the lens as I can. It's smooth. It has a satiny finish to it. Kind of has a spring and an elasticity. Part one is done. I'm gonna shape my little dough baby into a ball. I'm gonna take my mixing bowl, which still has all the flour gunk in it, totally fine. Stick that in there. And then I'm just gonna cover it with a clean dishcloth. Um, okay, now it needs to rise for one hour or until it's doubled. This part used to really trip me up, but it does not have to be difficult. Here's my best recommendation. Turn on your oven to 350 degrees. Let it sit for two or three minutes, and now is the most important part. Turn the oven off. 
completely off. So now I'm just gonna take this covered bowl and stick it in the turned off oven for about an hour or until the dough rises about double. Well, that's rising, I'm gonna run outside. The kids are working on cleaning out the barn and I'm gonna go help them for a little bit. Taggers. An hour has passed. Let's see how it looks. What do you think, Bridge? Pretty good. Pretty good? This is exactly what we want. It's about doubled in size, so we're ready for the next step. So your exact next step will depend on what type of bread product you want to make. I'm just gonna make a simple loaf of sandwich bread. So I'm going to punch down the dough, stick it in the loaf pan, and let it rise for another 20, 30 minutes or so. But like I said, you can turn this into pizza crust, cinnamon rolls, dinner rolls. I've included directions for each of those baked items down below. There's all different kinds of ways people will shape this for the second rise in the loaf pan. I just kind of turn it into an oval lump and call it good. All right, and it's risen up just above the edge of the pan. It's perfect, let's bake it. Mm -hmm. 